I honestly cannot remember the last time that I got properly excited to play Squad, or any other game for that matter. And I mean like properly excited. The kind of excited where you are literally itching to get on. So, you send your kid to bed one hour early, you see to the wife in record time, and order some takeout because I haven't got time to cook. I've got something waiting for me. Well, after Squad's fourth update to the infantry combat overhaul, that's exactly how I was and pretty much summed up my weekend. OWI posted a huge list of changes, tweaks and fixes, as well as also adding in the Canadian Armed Forces to play with. And I have to say, they've absolutely nailed it with this update. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty of this update, why I enjoyed it so much and what's still to come from the infantry combat overhaul. But before we do get started, don't forget to subscribe as my video for the Squad 5.1 patch notes will be out on Tuesday as soon as I get my dirty little hands on them. To start off, Canada was implemented and in doing this, they also had a bit of a tweak and a shuffle with the kits to make them more authentic and give them a unique playstyle. Most kits came with the C7 rifle paired with the C79 3.4x scope, and I cannot get over just how clear these are to use. It makes the faction feel almost brand new again. There are a few holographic options, but they are pretty uncommon. I think it's just the squad leader and a rifleman that gets them, but it's a bloody nice hollow to use even if the front sight post is in the way and the dot of the hollow is ever so slightly off. However, it's possibly the most planted kit in the game right now and just feels great in all situations. The only kits to get irons are the crewman and pilots and it is also the C8 carbine. I didn't get to use them much, but in CQB situations, they are nasty to come up against. As to be expected, this also brought in the Timberwolf sniper rifle, which seems to be very fought over at the moment, but this has a maximum zoom of a 25 times, which is absolutely insane for a game like this. And the Carl Gustav V2 is the heavy AT of choice, with another incredibly clear sight to use. Now, as per my previous videos on these play tests, a lot of you know how vocal I have been about the excessive use of blur causing headaches and eye strain. Well, OWI seem to have listened and have tweaked a lot of these blur effects, including the in-scope blur, meaning you can actually see what you're shooting at. However, if you start going ham and spraying at everything, the blur effect does kick in. Honestly, of everything in this build, this one change right here is my absolute favorite and is what contributed the most to being able to enjoy these playtests now. A few other tweaks include increasing the spread on belt-fed machine guns whilst increasing their ADS time. They added a 3D ammo indicator on all vehicles and ammo resources. This is a very small but subtle little change, as a lot of people never knew that they could rearm from a vehicle. So this is a fantastic little prompt. The suppression visual effects got a tweak with some extra visual effects and filters to add to the intensity, especially when under high stress and first person muzzle flash added some more sparks and some dust kick up when you're firing your weapon. These are only a handful of the changes and tweaks they've done. I could essentially do a full patch note video on these. Honestly, there's that many, but what I'm going to quickly talk about now before we delve further into this video was the marksman and sniper optics received a small change that had a huge effect on how this kit is used. Basically, OWI set the minimum zoom effect of the optic to a six times in an effort to help prevent it from being a jack of all trades kit. Now as a big marksman enjoyer, I was a little on the back foot about this one, but having played as marksman for a few rounds with these changes, I didn't really have to adjust how I played that much. I did have to be more wary of the angles I was looking for to ensure that I had a bit more range, but that's probably a smart thing to do as a marksman anyway. Whenever moving through close quarters environments, I always made sure I had one or two friendlies somewhat nearby in case I got jumped. I think once there's a good solid predictable point fire mechanic in place, I won't have to worry too much about bumping into someone, but I think a better option will be to simply give the marksman either one or two more pistol mags, especially the Timber and SV98 kits as they are bolt action, so we'll lean on their sidearm much more. And two mags isn't enough given how weak 9mm is in squad, so a few extra mags isn't really going to break the balance here, but will help you out in those situations when you're either being pushed 
or you're the last man standing trying to rescue your hab and radio. The changes that OWI made to picture-in-picture -picture optics are absolutely fantastic in this build. From the ACOG to the C79, they were all fantastic to use. The One Piece 79 Russian optic maybe still is a little bit too green because when you're in a woodland map looking for Canada, who's green, and you've got a green filter, it's just green on green on green. It becomes a bit awkward. The blur around the optics seems to have been reduced significantly to a somewhat similar state as Vanilla Squad, and it feels much more comfortable on the eye. And whilst you can't see clearly around the outside of your scope, you can make out movement, and that is very important. You now have a chance to call out people on the flank, or have the ability to check and react to someone peering out of a bush trying to doink you. As I mentioned before, in-scope blur has been reduced drastically to the point where you can actually fire in semi shot after shot and you can see where you're shooting at and where your rounds are going. However, if you start going ham, it does start to fuzz up and get more hazy. This seems to have more of an effect on the belt fed machine guns to stop them from being long range laser beams. Also, the increase in spread that they now get, it seems that shooting in five to 10 round bursts is the way to be the most effective. Only time I went full auto using machine gun was to suppress someone who was shooting at me when I had no idea where they were. So it was more of a panic option to cover myself as I backed into cover. The tweaks to the visual suppression effects are absolutely incredible. And it really drives home the whole point of suppression and using it against your enemies. All of these tweaks just seem to have made the playtest so much more enjoyable. Now we can see where we're shooting, we can actually sit down and learn the sway and record changes properly and learn the timings of your stamina and weapon control. And because people were enjoying themselves more, there was much more teamwork. And that's what this overhaul is all about. In fact, that's what squad is about. Working together with random people you've never met before but playing alongside each other as if you've known them all your life. And these changes are reinforcing that. Yes, you can still lone wolf if you want to, but working as a squad is so much more effective and empowering. And you don't have to be clumped up together. You can be split within your three fire teams and attack or defend from three different angles. People were communicating so much more as well. I saw something so rare the other day. I actually saw an iron sight rifleman sat next to a marksman who was set up. The rifleman was marking and calling out targets with his binoculars, and every time, the marksman was knocking the target down. Not only that, but the iron sight rifleman bodied two guys who pushed up on them. AT launches seem to have been tweaked too, and combined the very small tweak with the fact that you don't get scope blur means being anti-tank, especially heavy anti-tank, is now enjoyable again. It was so bad to use in Playtest 3 that even one hour into the game, the kit was still available. I honestly think this is more than a step in the right direction. This is a huge leap forwards. There's that small hint of familiarity, which is an absolute must have, because this is what will keep a lot of the existing squad player base engaged, as that familiarity will be enough for most players to be able to touch base with whilst learning all of these new mechanics. Don't get me wrong, it's still far from perfect. Performance across the board for a lot of people will need to be improved and you still feel somewhat disconnected from your weapons. But I honestly think it's really close to being within the sweet spot. With weapon handling and sway, I think a lot of it can be down to the fact that the squad's base sensitivity is too high. Despite playing between 800 and 1200 DPI myself, I have always been a wrist player rather than moving all of my arm with my mouse. But being a high sensitivity player with these movement changes seems to have more of an effect on you than if you play at a lower sensitivity. I've already dropped from 1.0 to 0.5 within squad, and that's made a huge difference for me in terms of weapon control and keeping sway in check. For me, suppression is absolutely on the money. It does what it says on the tin and is a usable asset. Picture-in-picture -picture optics are almost perfect now. And what happens within the scope is amazing. Just needs a good bit of optimization somehow. Maybe calm down how the optic moves by a very, very small margin. And weapon handling still feels a little bit too jumpy. But that could be down to the animations. And perhaps for irons and hollows, I think that side-to-side -side jitter the guns do can be calmed down a little bit 
as well as some of the little blur. Movement is the one that I'm undecided on right now. Walking pace is fine. I think sprint could be slightly faster, but I would still like the option to have a jogging speed as such that uses up my stamina, but at a much slower rate. Just for those times that I have to cover five, six or 700 meters on foot, just makes those transitional periods less of a chore. APCs and mechanized infantry are going to be an important asset in this build, especially those who are good at getting infantry in and behind you for a shock and awe tactic. It's one of those few ways to actually attack effectively, especially in invasion. For the Canadian Armed Forces and especially the C-79 Optic, whilst this isn't something I'm overly hung up on, but if we had the ability to use the irons that's on top of the Optic, that would be a great feature. Especially with hollows and iron sights being very rare through that faction now, it gives them a viable close quarter asset. Hopefully, the AK-12 canted clear sights make a comeback soon, but not just for the AK-12, hopefully for a host of different kits and factions, because that was a feature that I really enjoyed. To summarize, for myself, at least Playtest 4 was the best rendition of squad I have ever played. Now you can see what you're doing, you're able to learn the weapon handling, the sway, and other things. And that's led to a new level of learnable difficulty. It's a new skill, but skill will still be king. Yes, it all makes you play a bit slower than in vanilla, but that's the vision. Strategies are now more dynamic and diverse rather than pulling the same move time after time. But working together side by side with your other squads is what will give you the advantage. Infantry and armor squads really do need to work together now to ensure your team has the upper hand and advantage. It no longer feels like two different games going on within squad. Squad is shifting away from the self-gratitude type play that's crept in over the years. A team being able to be carried by a handful of players or a single squad is hopefully going to become a thing of the past, as it's slowly turning into a true grand scale tactical battle as it follows this vision. I was going to say, high kill games are going to be a thing of the past, but I had a few games this weekend where I performed as well as, if not better than I would have in Vanilla Squad. And that's purely down to the fact that it's making you rethink how you play. Okay, sometimes I may not have had the outright kill count, but if assists were a thing through suppression and tactics, that statistic would be through the roof. If you missed Playtest 4, don't fret. It's still available to try out on Jensen's range, but there's also still eight factions to be implemented and tested. So that's probably going to be a minimum of eight playtests. If you want to know how you can get involved in the playtest, follow the link on screen now. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more squad guides, gameplay and updates. Take care and I'll catch you in my next video.